ask you if you can uh, describe the wounds on Mr. Guy's abdominal area. Yes, so this is the approximate location. There were actually five stab wounds. There's only four circles there on the left. Um, but again, this, this diagram uh, demonstrates that uh, virtually all the skin had been dissolved away on uh, Mr. Guy's, the front of his torso, and that his arms were disarticulated and his legs were disarticulated and his head was skeletonized. There were, this is the approximate location. Um, again, these were visualized uh, not in the fat like we see here, but once the abdominal wall was reflected or opened, um, I could actually see on the inside where those stab wounds um, entered into the body cavity. And the large drawing on Mr. Guy's right, which would be your left, um, is uh, that large area on the abdominal wall that I described that I don't know if it was part of the dismemberment process or whether it was just a, a, an extremely large sharp force wound that was inflicted while he was still alive. So you don't have an opinion? There's Joel Guy Jr. looking almost unaffected at the photos um, and the diagrams of his murdered parents. We'll take a break and we'll have more when we come back. Stay with us. Hello and welcome back to Court TV Live. I'm Michael Ayala and thank you again for being with us for our gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage of Tennessee versus Joe Guy Jr. He is again charged with killing his parents, dismembering their bodies to try to get rid of the evidence. Right now on the stand is the medical examiner who did the post-mortem examination on the parents, uh, the victims in this case, Lisa and Joe Guy, by all accounts, a great couple and great people. So let's get back into the courtroom for more testimony. I can't. And uh, does this indicate that uh, Mr. Guy was assaulted both from the front and the back, your findings? Yes. Okay. And next, B, this exhibit, and if we could enlarge that. So if you could just uh, dis discuss your findings and the, the diagram. Sure. Uh, again, um, this demonstrates that Mr. Guy's head was um, completely skeletonized. The arms were disarticulated and the legs are, uh, as well. There was still some skin on his back. Um, and this, these are the approximate, again, not, not an exact replica, but the approximate uh, number and location of wounds on both sides of, of Mr. Guy's back. Okay. So the the wounds that affected his liver, was that from the, the, the abdominal wounds or from the wounds from the, from the back? It, it could have been from either okay. or that, both. Is that the same with the kidneys? Uh, the, kidneys kidney, right? the kidneys were likely from the back as opposed to the front. All right. And uh, the wounds, the injuries to his lungs would clearly be from the sharp force injuries to the back, is that? Most likely from the back, yes. Uh, now, uh, what was your ultimate finding as to his uh, cause of death? So uh, the cause of death of Mr. Joel Guy Sr. is multiple sharp force injuries. And the manner of death? Homicide. Could you turn the lights on, please? Okay, so now I would like to uh, direct your attention to uh, Mrs. Guy's autopsy. And I don't mean to be disrespectful by sometimes referring to her as Lisa. If I do, I apologize, but uh, um, it's probably easier to hear if I use the first name. So um, could you please discuss, uh, you also prepared a report with respect to her autopsy. I did. So this will be 739? Yes. Okay, 
And I'm going to show you, um, it's been marked for identification as Exhibit 739, and ask you uh, if you recognize this document. I do. And uh, what is it? This is a copy of the autopsy report for Lisa M. Guy. Can you move this into evidence, Your Honor, please? Any objection? There we go. Exhibit 739. Dr. Foss, if you would just sort of take us through your report, just as you did with Mr. Guy's autopsy, and uh, please discuss your findings. So, like Mr. Guy, uh, Mrs. Guy was also dismembered. Uh, there were some differences uh, in the uh, degree to which she was dismembered and the way she was dismembered. Her head was uh, completely severed from her body. Um, her arms were disarticulated at the shoulders, and her legs were disarticulated at the knees. So in comparison to Mr. Guy, who had his legs disarticulated at the hips, Mrs. Guy's um, legs were at the knees. So her, her thighs were still intact. Her thighs were still attached onto her body, but her head was completely severed, and her arms were completely severed. Much like Mr. Guy, the skin of her back was still relatively well-preserved um, compared to her front where there was almost no skin left. Um, Mrs. Guy's head was found in a, uh, a large pot in liquid in the kitchen. Um, the, the liquid in the pot um, had a slightly different character to it than the liquid in uh, the plastic tubs. It, it didn't have the strong chemical odor. It had a slight odor of decomposition, but it did not have the chemical odor like the, the bins upstairs did. And the skin that remained, the skin and flesh that remained on her scalp was different. It did not have um, the... Um, the, 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 the top layer of skin was still intact. In other words, the skin looked like it had heat artifact or what we call thermal artifact as opposed to a chemical artifact. The hair was still there as well. Um, and so that those, those were the primary differences. Miss um, Guy had multiple sharp force injuries on her back. She had at least 25, and again, I'm having to do a little bit of a hedge because of the, the, the degree to which the remains were altered. Um, again, the wounds were on both sides of her back. They were approximately six to seven inches deep. They included injuries to the heart, so the right ventricle or the right side of her heart, the aorta in her abdomen, which is the major blood vessel that, that leaves the heart and feeds the, um, the lower portion of the body. Both lungs were injured, the left kidney, the liver, and her third uh, thoracic vertebra, so a bone in the spine also appeared to be injured. She also had five stab wounds that were relatively superficial on her buttock as well. Would you describe these wounds as uh, uh, before death, perimortem? Uh, for the ones that I could tell, yes. Um, there was also a large, um, a large cutting wound on the right side of her abdomen that was in a similar location to Mr. Guy that I was not able to tell if it was related to the dismemberment or whether it was a uh, premortem sharp force injury. Okay. Um, did you take photographs of Mrs. Guy's injuries? Yes. Can you hear me? I, feel I like can. I, I, I was just trying not to cut you off. I'm sorry. <laughs> Look at uh, these photographs and tell me if you recognize them, please. Exhibit 740B. 
I do. And what do the photographs depict? Uh, these are, again, slightly altered photographs of the injuries from Mrs. Guy. And if you would, as we just go through these, Dr. Hawes, just describe your uh, observations that you made at the time of autopsy. And we may want to turn this the other way, the other, there, like this. Is that an accurate, uh, just tell the jury what you see. Sure. Uh, this is, again, a slightly altered uh, photograph, and it's a little difficult to tell uh, where it is on the body uh, because of the, uh, the dismemberment process, but it appears that this is a stab wound that I've not previously described on the left of Miss Guy's chest. Uh, this appears to be the edge of the dismemberment of the arm, and this appears to be uh, fatty tissue up here toward the head. So again, this is a stab wound on her, uh, the left side of her upper chest. Her, uh... So the medical examiner continues explaining the wounds on the body of Lisa Guy, one of the victims in this case. Now, I just want to remind you, we're not showing you the actual photos that she's referring to because they're just too graphic in nature. We'll have more when we return. Please stay with us.